Hi, welcome to a quick preview of my latest book, Create, Automate, Accelerate. This is a radical new blueprint to building a business and a life that's exciting, has purpose, and gives you the freedom that you want. Now, there's a few things that I want to clear before we begin, and that's that basically a lot of people choose to become an entrepreneur for the wrong reasons. And perhaps the biggest myth is that becoming an entrepreneur is going to make you a whole heap of cash and that all of this money is going to make you happy. Now, two things around this. First of all, statistically speaking, the majority of entrepreneurs are broke for a very long time and many never succeed. That's just the hard, cold truth. The second thing is that really money doesn't actually bring happiness. It only alleviates stress and that's financial stress. And you know, there's plenty of studies out there to show this. Nobody ever believes you until they make the money and then they realize, ah, yeah, okay, it didn't bring me this kind of huge shift in my emotional state that I was expecting. So, okay, what about time? Well, if you look at these guys here, they're all very famous and successful entrepreneurs. And each one of them has stated that, especially during the early years of their business, they were working 12 to 16 hours plus a day. Now, many people are trying to become an entrepreneur because they want to create all of this, this extra free time to spend with their families and all of the other myths that are sold on the sales pages out there. The truth is that these guys are working harder than their employees. And even though they could have retired years ago, they haven't. I mean, okay, with Bill Gates, he's shifted his focus, but he's still very, very active. He's still very committed with his time. And, you know, they continue years after they could have retired. So that begs the question, if it's not for the money or for the time, then why even choose to become an entrepreneur? And I think if we look at things differently, if we see the entrepreneur as another form of artists, you know, there's, there's many different types of artists. We have painters and musicians, actors, but businessmen, or should I say entrepreneurs, because the word entrepreneur means to take an unlevel, an unusually high level of risk. So a lot of people seeking the money are looking for security, etc. But that's not the life of an entrepreneur. The life of an entrepreneur is that of a risk taker. And so if we see the entrepreneur as an artist, somebody who's using business as his or her canvas to express themselves creatively, to be able to come up and build new projects, to build new ideas, and to see those come to fruit in this world then we see the mindset of an entrepreneur being quite different. And again, if we think about most uh, artists, no matter what their form, in the early days, they're of, often known as the struggling musician or the struggling artist, where they're using you know, their last money to try and buy some new canvas or to upgrade their instruments. And few of those artists succeed to any great high degree. Some manage to be able to create a sustainable lifestyle from their art. Others uh, struggle and use it more as a side hobby. And I think the, true, the truth is that this is very much the same for entrepreneurs. I meet many that are trying to build a business on their side of their main job. And they might make a small income on the side, but they're not really fully committed. You meet others that are struggling by trying to do it alone and... Perhaps they're making ends meet, they're getting their bills paid, but they're really not taking off. And then you meet others that are extraordinarily successful. So we want to find out what makes the entrepreneur who's super successful different than the other artists that are either hobbyists or um, you know struggling to meet uh, the, the bills at the end of the month. And that's what I'd like to explore. So the first thing that we need to do when building a business is to create it. And I like to think of this creation process as being fundamental to being an entrepreneur, hence the analogy with the artist. Before we begin, though, we need to understand where we are going. A lot of people come to me and say, 
what's the fastest way I can make money? And I think that this is really inherently the wrong question. It's not that we don't need to make money. It's not that we don't need to ask the question uh, or answer the question, how are we going to achieve cash flow within our business? Indeed, it is actually a fundamental priority. However, it is not the biggest priority. Understanding the purpose of our business and where we are going is far more important. So some of you will recognize this, this pyramid from Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's the simplified version. He did go on to expand it a little bit in later years. However, the important point here is to look. You see, at the bottom we have the physiological needs. Now, the physiological needs and even the safety needs can easily be met by cash flow. And there are many ways to achieve this. You know, you could achieve this through creating a business that's purely money focused. You could achieve this through a job that pays sufficiently but doesn't necessarily deliver on the higher levels. Now, if you want to move up this pyramid, you need to make sure that you don't get stuck in the lower levels. If your whole time is focused around creating cash flow in whatever way that you possibly can, uh, just simply to meet those bottom two levels, without giving any form of consideration to the upper levels, then you may find that you don't have time to be able to actually transition up. You get stuck at the bottom. So let's try and avoid that. Let's try and think before we start creating what is actually gonna enable us to move up and find a sense of belonging in this world. What is it that's gonna make us proud? What is it that's gonna feed our self-esteem that we are gonna look back and have a sense of achievement towards later in our years? And what is it that is gonna lead us to a sense of self-actualization where we are um, content with what we have created, where we are really living at a higher level and starting to give back and contribute towards society? Now, in this context, we can start considering uh, questions in a different order and that's really the uh, focus of the book if you will is to try and help you identify the best possible questions and the sequence in which you need to ask them now here we have a, a variety of different problems facing society you know we just need to turn on the news or um, sort of surf the internet to find that there is a, a range of issues that face society and what's really important is as an entrepreneur to recognize that we are fundamental to society. If you think about it, business actually forms society. Every single one of us is affected by business from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. And even while we're asleep, the bed, the sheets, the, um, the, the house that we're in, all of these were built by businesses. And, you know, society is out there looking for solutions and they're looking towards government or they're looking towards charities etc but really i believe that it is business that provides the fundamental answer and we're starting to see a shift with this uh, more and more businesses becoming socially aware and trying to look at creating solutions now you have only on average 4000 weeks in your life that's, that's the typical average lifespan. Now, for a lot of you listening to this, you're going to be at least 1,000, if not two or 3,000 weeks down. So that means you've only got probably around one to 2,000 weeks left. Don't let that depress you. That should be motivating. What do you really want to accomplish before you die? Do you want to just simply say, look back on your life and say, hey, yeah, you know what? I, I paid my bills. I don't think that's really... The, um, the sense of satisfaction that we're looking for here. So let's not waste any of those precious uh, weeks that we have left. Instead, let's find a way to tackle the world's issues. And if we're gonna build a business, build one that is worthy of building, not just to simply pay the bills. I think um, Stanislaw Jersey Leck really summed it up best in his uh, quote, no snowflake in an avalanche feels responsible. 
this is something that's often attributed to Voltaire, a mistake that I made before. Um, nonetheless, it's an extremely uh, very descriptive way, I think, to describe the issue of business because every single business feels as though they're independent. The business owner feels as though their priority is to simply you know, get some cash flow and then they'll deal with the other issues. Yet, we are either a part of the solution or we are a part of the problem. And I think that you know, no, no business these, these days can currently run 100% environmentally friendly. I mean, there's so many levels of impact, but we should be at least making a conscious decision to try and at least create for sustainability. Try and consider the environmental impacts that either our business has in the way that it runs or on the solution that it provides or could potentially provide in terms of its product or service. Financially, creating sustainability for the community, not trying to hold all of the cash for one individual, but share it between the team to create products that maybe support social financial stability. And the society itself, looking for ways to impact society in a positive way. Perhaps that's through education. Perhaps that's through providing good jobs for the community. No matter which way we look at it, businesses can impact all of these three areas. And by consciously designing our business, we can create for better sustainability, and we can keep improving this over time. Now, how can we achieve this? The five P's of priority are the questions that I believe all new business owners and even existing business owners should be asking. And I think these are the question, the the order that these questions need to be ans- asked in. Too many people jump to the end and they they ask, "How do I make money?" Other people jump in the middle and say, "Well, what am I passionate about?" And I think that this can lead us to um, sort of ineffective answers, certainly less than optimal. And there's often a belief or um, a false logic that says that you either need to focus on purpose or profit and that the two can't mutually coexist um, harmoniously together. And I think that they can. It's just that we need to ask the question in the correct order. And here, obviously, you can see, I believe that purpose, what is the purpose of your business? Business exists to provide a product or a service. So that means it has purpose. If your business is purely about making money, then you are missing the real core purpose of a business. Passion itself, passion comes from purpose. I think too many people say, I don't know what I'm passionate about. That's because they misunderstand what passion really is. People believe that passion is, uh, too often people believe that it's about what do I enjoy doing every minute of every day? And this just isn't the case. If you actually look at the root and the origin of the word passion, it, it has more in association with suffering than it does with enjoyment. And passion, I believe, stems from purpose. When we have a purpose, we can become passionate about that purpose. If you look at an Olympic athlete, they have a purpose. When they get the goal in mind, I want to become a gold medalist. They can become passionate about that purpose. And the path to achieving Olympic gold is far from painless. They have to make a lot of sacrifices. They have to pour a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into achieving that goal. And it is only through their passion that they are able to overcome the obstacles. They over, they're able to overcome these challenges that are inevitable in achieving an Olympic gold. Now, the truth is that the entrepreneur is no different. You know, they have to become passionate about their business and the purpose of their business is what will motivate them, that will drive them, that will keep them going through the challenging times, which are inevitable. Now, what do we need to succeed? The answer, of course, is people. 
We need people around us. Nobody does this alone. And no matter whether we are a small business or a large business, we have to have people around us, whether we are outsourcing, whether we are hiring teams, whether we're working with contractors, whether we have mentors or coaches. The people who surround us are the people who lift us up. They are the ones that help fill our missing skill sets. And they are the ones that will keep us going through the challenging times when perhaps emotionally we are struggling. And it is, I believe, both our purpose and our passion that will get other people enthusiastic, that will ignite their passions, that will get them excited and get the right people on board. Because when you have the right people, business can be a lot of fun. If you have the wrong people, it can be extremely challenging and frustrating. And I think a lot of people that have uh, tried outsourcing will understand this. If you're simply hiring people who are motivated by money, the chances are they're gonna jump to the next job that pays them 50 cents an hour more. There's no commitment. There's no enthusiasm. There's no uh, delivering ahead of schedule. So once we understand this, we can then ask the question, where are we best to locate ourselves? Where's the best place to be? Now this may be defined by our business's purpose. It may be defined by our passions and uh, us as an individual, what's a priority to us. Perhaps it's our family, perhaps it's an, a particular environment that we wish to live in. Those are questions that we may need to ask. It could be defined by the people that we need to hire. Where are the people who are gonna make this business a success located? And do I need to be located in the same place? Does the business need to be located in the same place? Once we have all of those questions answered, then we can turn our attention to how are we gonna monetize this business? How are we gonna turn a profit? Because we will need to make money to make the business sustainable. We're gonna need money to hire the right people, to pay for the right place, and perhaps to pay for the product or service to be created and deliver on that purpose. Now, here is a, an example um, that I want to, to illustrate that proves my point perfectly. Before I get, get into the example, let's just have a quick look at the purpose of purpose. It's in, interesting to me that when we look at the definition of purposeful, it is to having or showing a determination or resolve. That is so essential to the success of any business. You need to have that determination. A lot of people have um, identified grit, you know, this, this um, dedication and determination, being tenacious, dogged, unfaltering, unwavering, unshakable. Look at those synonyms there. They are all representative of this concept of having grit to succeed. Second, having a useful purpose. Like I say, a business without a purpose is an oxymoron. We need to have a useful purpose and it should be intentional. This isn't something that happens by accident. We need to give it due consideration and proper thought. If we're not conscious about it and we just assume that it's gonna manifest magically out of thin air, then I think we are somewhat self-deluded. So let's give a really good example of this. Google, perhaps one of the world's largest companies and it was born out of purpose. Google's mission is to organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. Now its founders did not start out with the um, objective to create one of the world's largest advertising networks. No, they started out with the idea that they wanted to make the world's information available to people via the internet with a single click. Now, the passion towards this stemmed from their passion towards coding and technology at large. These are the Google guys in the early days and their focus and determination towards achieving their purpose was so strong that they dropped out of university to focus purely on achieving this end result. To achieve it, they needed to get more people on board. They weren't able to do it alone. In fact, they didn't start out as an individual. Remember, they started out as a partnership. 
but they had to rapidly expand. They needed more coders. They needed designers. They needed um, financial uh, executives. They need to, you know, as the, as the company grew, they needed more and more roles filling, customer support. And they were only able to grow because of the their ability to grow their team. They were able to grow their team because they were located in the right place. They had access to huge talent. They had access to huge financial resources because they had access to the venture capitalists that were in the area. Even to this day, Google continue to put importance on the place that they are located. They, you know, this is their one of their main uh, headquarters, and you can see it's a place of inspiration. Why? Because they want to attract high-level talent that is motivated, that thinks differently, and that is inspired by the place that they work. And only after all of this do they consider the profit. You can see here that the annual revenues, this isn't even profit margins, but this is the annual revenues, do not really start growing in most tech businesses until around year five to year six. Now, why is that? Uh, because they are so focused on product and service development in the early days. They're so focused on trying to deliver a product or a service to deliver on their purpose that the money comes later. Google did not have a clear plan how it was going to make money. Their original idea was to perhaps sell to Yahoo. Yahoo knocked them back. They didn't want to buy their technology. So they had to come up with a different plan. If their initial idea was, we are going to sell, this is going to be our way of making money is to sell our technology, and they put all of their eggs in that basket, then they would have been in dire straits. They wouldn't be a business today. What happened? They decided to fund their business through advertising. Later on, they then expanded. They now sell physical products. They sell services. They sell data. They have a huge, uh, vast array of way ways to make money. And this is true of many big businesses. They are not focused on a particular revenue model. They employ many revenue models and just simply have one or two that are their primary generators. Now, so why is this possible? Well, it's possible because we actually have a real business. We have a business that's providing value, that has a purpose in the community. And therefore, with a little creative thinking, we can find multiple ways to monetize that business. So once we have a business, once we have our idea, once we have our purpose and we've created it, the next stage is to automate it. Because the old cliched question is still true. Are you working for your business or is your business working for you? And unless you are designing your business to be automated, Unless you are systematizing your business, the answer will always be that your business is working for you. And this is something that does not happen automatically. Um, this is not something that just manifests itself. This is something that you need to be conscious of. It's something that you need to be working on on a daily basis or else the years will slide on by and you will be still struggling within your business. And remember, you are your single point of weakness. Without you, your business will not exist unless you have a team around you. So what do these people have in common? Well, exactly that. They all have a team. Each one of them may be a star in the media. Each one of them may be ultra successful in their respective fields. However, none of them achieve that success without first establishing a solid team around. Each one of them needed to get the strong team below them to push them up, to carry them up to the higher levels. They didn't reach stardom and success and then go and hire the right people afterwards. Yet this is what so many entrepreneurs that I meet are trying to do. They're saying, well, you know, once I'm successful, I will get better people. Well, it's true that you need to keep 
building your team. You're not going to start with the A players on day one, not unless you're super lucky or you have a large amount of money to fund that from the very beginning. It's systematic. Each one of these guys, obviously they started out with probably some form of teacher or mentor or coach while they were in school and you know slowly built up teams that built in quality over time. But the point is that they were only able to be lifted up to the next level by reinvesting themselves uh, or by reinvesting their profits into establishing stronger and stronger teams at each stage. So the only two ways to automate anything? Well, it's those people again, or machines. Now, the great thing about doing business on the internet, of course, is that our primary machines are computers, and those computers can be programmed with software that can achieve a tremendous number of different tasks. In the world of uh, people, we have SOPs, or Standard Operating Procedures. These are essentially the manuals that define the way that people are expected to work, what they're going to do, what their tasks look like. And this is important because it gives people a framework and gives them clarity in what they need to do, but it also makes it easy to replace people when ev eventually they need to leave. So remember, we're looking to systematize and to automate, and this is what makes our businesses run smoothly. So the question is, are you flatlining? Are you trying to be the person who is the CEO? the marketing guy, the copywriter, writer, the video, the graphics, the content, accounts, even the office cleaner. You know, each of these tasks need to be done. And unless you have other people helping you, that means you're the one doing them all. That means you need to study how to do them all. That means you need to be setting aside time to achieve each of these different roles. Perhaps being a CEO doesn't take up huge amounts of time in a small business, but you still do need to take time to focus on the direction of your company. Marketing may not be a big priority, but that may be why you are struggling. That may be why you're not growing your customer base. Copywriting may not be your core skill, but that perhaps is why you're not converting as well as you could be. Because if you are providing a product or a service, or you're building a business where you are everybody in that business, you will be flatlining. And if anything should ever happen to you, you are gonna be in serious trouble. So let's be conscious about the different roles within our business. Try to create some form of diagram and perhaps it looks like this sort of pyramid where we see the different roles within our, in the business that may be relevant to our specific business. We then need to write a name on each of those roles. And if the name at the moment is you uh, and your name is in each of those places, then start consciously trying to replace yourself for each of the different roles until eventually you're the only guy left at the top and eventually you can even replace yourself. Once you do that, you now have a business that can survive and live without you. You now have a business that is an asset that is creating passive income because it runs with or without you. That doesn't mean you don't need to be involved or you, you can't be involved. If you want to, you can still be involved in your business. But if you don't, if you have new projects, new ideas, um, or you simply wish to spend your time in other ways, you have the freedom to be able to do that. So how to accelerate our business, how to really take it to the next level, to really get that growth? Well, the formula T plus T plus T multiplied by T equals R is one that I've been teaching for a while now, but I think it gives us a an indicator into how we can really maximize the growth of our business. And that's by putting our resources into the right places, by balancing our resources. You see, a lot of people I meet at uh, events will put a huge amount of money into training. You know, that's why they're at an event, is to go there and learn. And that's great. I mean, a learning and training is an important part of business. But if we put all of our resources, our financial resources, our time resources into learning, then it means we're not investing sufficient amounts of money into building our team or to investing into proper tools. Tools are leverage. 
I mean, the, one of the simplest tools is a lever and it is the fundamental root of the word leverage. So if you're buying amateur tools, if you're trying to do everything with free tools, the chances are you are going to end up with minimal results. The chances are that you are going to be playing at an amateur level. If you want to get professional results, use professional tools. Now, the biggest, perhaps most, you know, uh, fundamental part of this equation is the team. The great thing about the team is that when you hire a good team member, not a cheap team member necessarily, a good team member, they're going to come with their own training. They've already invested their own money. They've already invested their own time into training. So you don't need to go and learn how to use the video editing software. Just hire the video editing guy. He can now use his own time and his own training and perhaps even his own tools to help you and your business get better results. So look at this equation. It's really important. You cannot get a result without putting any time in at all. But by hiring good team members, you'll get better results. By hiring bad team or investing into bad training or buying bad tools, you're going to harm the end result or you're going to even end up with a negative result and i literally mean that where you can end up basically wasting a huge amount of money and getting zero result um, so be aware of this formula and make sure that you're investing in the right things in the right quantities um, and and maintaining balance within in, in, in within that investment of your business always be testing and measuring this is fundamental marketing, but really it's something we should be doing in all areas of our business. Understand the metrics of our business. What are our opt-in rates? What are our, our conversion rates on sales pages? What are, are our refund rates? What are our retention rates? What are our um, customer sp support response rates? What are our customer satisfaction rates? What is the um, productivity and the speed of programming or design? Each area of our business needs to be understood and constantly be tested and improved upon. Now, again, if you're feeling overwhelmed by this, it's probably because you don't have a big enough team. It's probably because you're missing the critical people to help you achieve this. I'm saying that your business needs this. I'm not suggesting that you are necessarily the person to do it. Maybe you are. Maybe that's where your skill set lies. But if it's not, that doesn't mean that you should be ignoring it. It doesn't mean that it shouldn't be happening. You absolutely want to be doing this all of the time. There are a variety of different tools to help you test and measure. Make sure that you are at least using a couple of them to get started. And make sure that you are finding somebody whose, whose sole responsibility it is to continually improve your business invest reinvest and invest again did i mention that business isn't about the cash you look at any successful business and they are built by people who invest their own money they are built by people who will get other people to invest financially into their business but they're also built by people who understand that a business isn't there to simply line their own pocket. It's there to generate cash, to reinvest and to grow itself. Now it may get to that point where there is sufficient funds that can now go back into the founder's pocket. But that's later down the line. It's not in the early days and perhaps it's not for the first four, five, six, seven years of a business. I watched a really... Um, excellent interview with Elon Musk and Richard Branson uh, that was hosted by Google. You can go find it on YouTube. But both of them said that for the first five years of a business, it was a struggle financially. And, you know, in both Elon's case and Richard's case, they both nearly lost multi-million dollar businesses uh, where they were at a breaking point where they only had two days left to come up with millions of dollars to save their businesses. They were at risk, both financially and personally, to make sure that their businesses survived. So recognize that the key to super success is constant investment. 
investment of your time and investment of your money and uh, investment of your business's money reinvesting in itself. There's one disease that I see uh, throughout business, throughout personal lives. And, you know, it, it stems from the very bottom and goes right to the very top and starts, if it's at the top, it will spread all the way back down. That disease will cripple you to the point that it will slow growth. It will cripple you that to the point that if untreated, it can cause death, death of your business. This disease is so widespread that you may not almost uh, realize that it's there. Yet, it's in every single business that I've come across, and that disease is blame. You see, when we blame, we choose to be lame. That is, we choose to be a cripple. And as a business owner, we don't have this luxury. If we go around blaming the economy, if we go around blaming the competition, blaming the governments, um, blaming our employees, blaming our suppliers, then we basically give our power away and we are unable to make the changes that are required in, the, in order to survive or to, to eventually thrive. So the important thing to remember is it's not that bad things won't happen. It's not that we won't end up hiring the wrong people or that we won't end up doing business with bad suppliers or that the government may not uh, may make uh, bad decisions. These things are likely to happen at various points throughout our business. You know, it's not that to try and avoid these things. I mean, if we can, then great. But it's understanding that we learn, need to learn to take responsibility when we face those challenges. And when we blame, we essentially remove ourselves from that responsibility. By taking the responsibility, we take back the ability to respond. That gives us the power to now make new decisions and find ways to overcoming those obstacles. Once we learn to do it ourselves, we need to also encourage all of our team to do exactly the same. We need to make sure that we create a company culture where blame is no longer acceptable and where responsibility is the mantra. Once we achieve this, we will enable far more rapid growth within our business. Now, finally, Another attitude that I think is essential to accelerating your business is to understand that we are lucky. A successful business owner is lucky. I don't know a, a successful business owner that does not consider themselves lucky. And when they look back on their business, they said, look, there was a whole series of lucky breaks. It was timing, it was meeting the right people, I just happened to ha you know, get given the right piece of advice at the right time. There's a whole sequence of lucky events that make a successful business. But at the same time, those businesses were not successful by chance. There is a very big difference between luck and chance. You see, they are very intentional. The success comes from very focused intention. And you know, the truth is that there was a huge amount of bad luck in every successful business as well as good luck. It was only through the, the determination and the sheer grit of the founders and often the, the team that enabled the success of the, each business. So yes, they were lucky, but it certainly was not by chance. So if you think that um, it was just pure fluke, that, a business is, that the businesses that you look, uh, see around you were successful, then think again. There was no chance involved. There was luck. Um, and, you know, I count myself lucky and I am grateful for every new uh, piece of luck that I have in growing my business. But I am very clear about the direction that I'm going. I'm very clear about the direction that my business is going. And I'm very clear about how we will achieve our success. Now, I may be wrong. I may find 
new ways to achieve success that I haven't currently thought about. That's okay. You know, we'll take those lucky breaks, but we will continue moving forward with purpose, with passion, uh, with the right people. We will consistently ensure that we try to be in the right place at the right time and to generate profit with determination. Um, so I encourage you to do exactly the same and to, to help you do that, uh, I go and grab a copy of my book, Create, Automate, Accelerate. You can do that at createautomateaccelerate.com or find it on Amazon. And, you know, there's more information about what I've spoken about in this video, along with a whole heap of other chapters on, on topics that I haven't had chance to cover within this quick video. What I'd also like you to do is to consider your role in social responsibility and not just your business, but in your daily life. Perhaps one of the first things that you could do is to go and share this video to help encourage other business owners to also, also think in a more socially responsible way to create their businesses with more purpose and with more passion so that their businesses impact everybody's lives in a positive way so that they feel more content, more satisfied and have more happiness in their life because of what they've been able to achieve. Because I can promise you, you can make the money, but the and, and the, the feeling of creating a good amount of money is fun, but only for a very short period of time. After that, the, the feeling wears off very quickly. The feeling of having done good, the feeling of having contributed something, that lasts a lot, lot longer. And that is something that I think is an idea, as Ted would say, worth spreading. So please go share this video Go build a business worthwhile, go live a life worthwhile, and I wish you the greatest of luck, and I hope to one day meet you on this journey. Thank you.